Hello everybody, Mrs Duncan here. I thought I'd read you a story like the wind by Jill Lewis and Joe Weaver. A boy is slowly spinning through space. For 14 summers and 13 winters, he's lived on Earth. He's tall and thin, his coltish legs too long for a body that has yet to catch up. He has dark hair, dark eyes and a mouth that once held a smile. It's a boyish face, a thousand years old. He wears jeans and a t-shirt and a red silk scarf. He cradles a long slim case against his chest. It is all he has. It is all he has left. I'm nothing, he thinks, just a handful of stardust. But if I'm nothing, how can it hurt so much? He can still see his mother in bright morning sunlight. His feet can still run the maze of dusty streets. He can still trace his name etched in the top of his school desk. But all that is gone. They are only memories, moments of light locked into his synapses and pockets of time spilling away to the stars. They belong to another lifetime, not to now. Maybe this is what it's like to die, to be ripped away, to leave behind everything you've ever loved, unable to return. He glances at his fellow travellers, their faces ghosted by the moon. They sit in a circle, their knees cramped up to their chins, clutching the remains of their lives in small bags of belongings. A man and his wife sit together, their arms wrapped round their two young children. Beside them, an old man carrying a small white dog. And two boys with the dark shadow of manhood on their faces. They are all strangers to him, strangers who by their leaving have joined him too. They are bound together, floating across time and space to the promise of a safe harbour of a different world. The outboard engine gave up some time ago. It spluttered its death rattle. A last cough. A last breath. Then silence. Leaving them without maps. Without oars. Spinning, 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 slowly beneath the stars, in a small boat with a small hope, in a rising wind on a rising sea. The wind and waves begin to dance, kicking up cold salt spray. The boy runs his fingers along the goosebumps that rise on his bare arms. He is real. He is here, here is now. I'm alive, he thinks. He tilts his head back and speaks to the stars. My name is Rami and I'm still alive. Another voice speaks into the night. You look cold, Rami. The young mother has spoken. She offers her knitted shawl. Here, wrap this round you. Rami pulls his red scarf tighter around his neck and shakes his head. Thank you, but I'm warm enough. The woman's eyes rest on Rami. My name is Noor, she says, and this is my husband, Mustafa. Mustafa lifts his head from his hands and manages a weak smile. He has been sick since leaving land. Noor pushes away stray wisps of hair beneath her headscarf and she rests her hands on each child in turn. This is my son, Bashar. He's six. And my daughter, Amani, who's four. Bashar's eyes are wide and round. His eyebrows jump as each wave thumps against the boat. Amani is curled beside him, escaped in sleep. Both children are wrapped in thick coats and blankets. 
They are the only ones with life jackets in this boat, which is not a boat. It's a toy, a plaything for beaches and swimming pools. Two layers of plastic and air are all that lie between its passengers and the bottom of the sea. A belt buckle or a loose hairpin could tear it apart. A ride on this rubber dinghy is as expensive as a cabin on a cruise ship. One way ticket, thousand dollars each. My name is Mohammed, says the old man. He strokes the ears of the shivering dog tucked inside his coat. And this is Binny. It's a long time since she was a puppy, and even longer since I was a boy, but we still have each other. My name is Yosef, says the older of the two boys, and this is my brother Hassan. We have been travelling for many days now. He looks across at Rami. We are also still alive. The words tumble from the passenger's lips, keen to etch names and places into each other's minds. Remember me. Remember my name. Muhammad pulls a folded flatbread from his bag. It is wrapped in paper like a gift. Rani cannot help but stare. Saliva forms thick and sticky in his mouth. Here, says Muhammad, tearing strips of bread and passing them round to each passenger in the boat. Eat. It's a long time till dawn. Rami shakes his head. Thank you, but I'm not hungry. And he watches the others chew the bread while his own stomach cries out for food. The waves rise and fall and the boat tilts and slides. Mustafa groans and sinks deeper in the boat. His feet belong to the land, not to the sea. Yosef holds up a plastic bottle. Have some lemonade. Our mother made it for us when we left. It's made from the lemons that grew on the tree in our backyard. He passes it to Mustafa. Take a sip and pass it around. Mama said lemons are good for seasickness. When the bottle reaches Rama, he does not drink, but passes it on to Mohammed. Thank you, but I'm not thirsty. Yusuf looks at him. What is it, Rami? Why don't you share our food and drink? Why do you refuse to wrap Nor's shawl around you when we can all see you are cold? Rami's hands grip the slim case against his chest. I have nothing to give in return. This is all I have left. Basha's eyes open wide. What's inside? Rami unclips the lid and opens the case. This, he says. A violin lies sleeping in a bed of dark velvet, with a bow resting alongside. It looks out of place here. Too fragile. Too intricate. Too beautiful. Suspended silence from some other world. Rami lifts it with two hands as carefully as if it were a newborn child. I had to leave quickly, he said. I took the only thing I could not leave behind. Basha wriggles across to Rami for a closer look. He reaches out to touch the curled scroll on the pegs holding the taut strings in place and traces his finger along the slender neck on the smooth wooden curves of the violin's body. Yosef looks into the empty case and frowns. This is all you have? You have nothing to eat? No, says Rami. Just this. Hassan shakes his head. What use is it to you now? You could have sold it for food or water or even a life jacket. Rami shakes his head. No. You see, this is everything to me. It carries my soul. Muhammad leans forward. Please show us, Rami. Show us what this means to you.